Hello students, welcome. Previously, lesson 3 from 1 to 2, we were dealing with separation of soluble solid liquid mixtures. So today, lesson 4, we want to proceed to the mixed concepts of solid solid mixtures. Kindly stay with us until the end of the video. We are going to do around four questions. The first question we are told describe how solid iron 3 chloride can be separated from a solid mixture of iron 3 chloride and anhydrous calcium chloride. So if you check, we have iron 3 chloride. And iron 3 chloride was an example of the substance that undergoes sublimation method. Or it was one of the examples of the substance that do supply. Such substances include iodine, you are having iodine, aluminum chloride, aluminum chloride, we are having, remember, iron 3 chloride, we are having iron 3 chloride, iron 3 chloride, such substances include benzoic acid, we are having benzoic acid, benzoic acid. And lastly, we were having something to do with the dry ice where we see solid carbon peroxide. And lastly, we were having something called ammonium chloride. Even ammonium chloride was an example of the substance that undergo sublimation method. So if in case you come across one of these substances, the method that we are going to separate such mixture will be just sublimation method. So we are saying uh, in the description, heat the mixture in a beaker. Which mixture? The mixture of iron 3 chloride and anhydrous calcium chloride. We are going to put it in a in a beaker covered with the evaporating dish containing cold water. And we are saying iron 3 chloride sublimes into vapor and collects or gets deposited beneath or underneath the evaporating dish. Or we can say gets deposited on the cooler part of the evaporated dish. What about calcium chloride? Calcium chloride remains in the beaker because calcium chloride will not supply. So it will be just remaining in the beaker. So I say note, since iron 3 chloride supplies, but calcium chloride does not supply, hence sublimation process would do. Okay, that means the method that we have used to separate this mixture was sublimation method. Question number two. We are told, given a mixture of sand, benzoic acid, and sodium chloride, describe how this mixture can be separated to obtain a sample of each. So here we have sand, we have benzoic acid, and we have sodium chloride. So here we have benzoic acid, which is one of the substances that undergo sublimation method. Then, when we use sublimation method, we are having sand and also sodium chloride to be separated. So, we can add water to this two mixture so that the sodium chloride dissolves to form sodium chloride solution where sand does not dissolve in water. So, we do again filtration method so that we collect sand as a residue and we obtain sodium chloride solution as a filtrate. Then, we are supposed to evaporate the, the water so that we remain with sodium chloride. So we're saying heat the mixture in a beaker, which mixture? Mixture of sand, benzoic acid, and also sodium chloride in a beaker covered with evaporated dish containing cold water. Then we're saying benzoic acid supplies, hence it will be collected on the cooler part of the evaporated dish, or it will get deposited on the cooler part of the evaporated dish. So we're saying again, add water to the remaining mixture, which remaining mixture? Sand and also sodium chloride. Stir it, sodium chloride dissolves, while sand does not dissolve. After that, we are supposed to filter the mixture to obtain sand as a residue and sodium chloride solution as a filtrate. So, we are, we are told again, heat the filtrate to saturation and allow it to cool for crystals of sodium chloride to form. Or here we can say, heat the filtrate to remove the water so to obtain sodium chloride. So that when I say not sublimation method, filtration and also crystallization method or you can say even evaporation method are used to separate the mixture of sand, benzoic acid and also sodium chloride. So sublimation we have used because to remove benzoic acid, we have used the filtration method to remove the sand and we have used crystallization or evaporation method to remove the water so that we remain with sodium chloride crystals. So in question 3, we are told, given a mixture of iron fillings, sugar and sulfur, 
describe how this mixture can be separated to obtain a sample of each. So here we're having iron filling. Remember, iron filling is magnetic. And we're having sulfur and also sugar, which are non-magnetic. So here we can use the use of a magnet to remove the iron fillings. Then we're having sugar and sulfur. We can add water so that sugar dissolves to form sugar solution, while sulfur does not dissolve. Then we use filtration method to remove sulfur as a residue, and we are going to have sugar solution as as the filtrate. Then we are going to evaporate so that we remove the water, we obtain sugar crystals. So I say place the mixture of iron filling, sugar and sulfur on a piece of paper and spread it out. Hold the magnet above the mixture. What will happen? Iron fillings get attracted to the magnet, leaving sugar and sulfur on the paper. Then we will add water to the remaining mixture in a beaker. Stir it. Sugar dissolves while sulfur does not. We are saying again, filter the mixture to obtain sulfur as a residue and a sugar solution as a filtrate. Then we heat the filtrate to saturation and allow it to cool for crystals of sugar to form. Then we are saying note, the use of magnets, filtration and crystallization methods are used to separate the mixture of iron filling, sugar and also sulfur. We go to question number four. In question number four, we are told given that, given a mixture of ammonium chloride, iron fillings, cobalt sulfate, and also lead to oxide. Describe how this mixture can be separated to obtain a sample of each. So in future, we are having ammonium chloride. We said ammonium chloride is one of the substances as a negotiable sublimation method. We are having iron filling. Iron filling is magnetic. Then we are having cobalt sulfate and also lead to oxide. So that means cobalt sulfate when you put water, it dissolves, while lead to oxide does not dissolve. So that means first of all, we have to use uh, the use of magnets to remove iron filling. Then next we have to use sublimation method to remove ammonium chloride. Then we have to add water to the remaining mixture. That's cobalt sulfate and also the two oxide so that cobalt sulfate dissolves to form cobalt sulfate solution. Then we filter to obtain the two oxide as the residue and also cobalt sulfate solution as a filtrate. Then we evaporate the filtrate so that we obtain cobalt sulfate crystals. So I say, place the mixture of ammonium chloride, iron fillings, cobalt sulfate, and two oxide on a piece of paper and spread it out. Hold a magnet above the mixture and the two iron fillings get attracted to the magnet, leaving ammonium chloride, cobalt sulfate, and the two oxide on the paper. The two heat the remaining mixture in a beaker covered with evaporating dish containing cool water. And we are told ammonium chloride sublimes and is collected on the cooler part of the evaporating dish or is collected beneath the evaporating dish. And we are told add water to the remaining mixture, which remains the mixture, cobalt sulfate and also lead to oxide. Add water to the remaining mixture, stir, stir it, cobalt cobalt sulfate dissolves, while lead to oxide does not. Then we are told filter the mixture to obtain lead 2 oxide as a residue and cobalt sulfate solution as a filtrate. Then we are told heat the filtrate to saturation and allow it to cool for crystals of cobalt sulfate to form. Then I say note sublimation method, use of magnets, filtration and crystallization methods are used to separate the mixture of ammonium chloride, iron fillings, cobalt sulfate and also lead 2 oxide. So, Lanas, that's the end of our video today. Thank you for watching.